I tell you this. I have no further claims in Coronation Street. And my message to Inner Sharples and the rest of the world is... Peace in our time! Well, Tom, pass us a drawing pin, will you? Oh, well, you uh, One thing at a time, Annie boy. You know, you look a bit of all right up there, fella. Uh, we're a bit short of decoration, so I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll nip back to the yard and I'll get some paint and jazz you up a bit. I'll jazz you up if you don't pass us that flipping drawing pin. Come on, mate. mate. How's that been, all right? Ah, uh, it's down about a sixteenth, I'd say. Would you? <laughs> yeah, it. Hello, Hello, my little Hello. darling. Whoops. Whoops. Come, on. come on, love, let's see what you've got for Christmas. Oh, yeah, now come on, show. Come I'll on, bet come that on. was nice. Did you put That's your stocking up? Come, come on, on, darling, come let's on. have a look at you. Come, 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 come to daddy, come to daddy, come to daddy, no. Where's your big daddy gone? Where is he? There. Look, He's come to say thank you for his present. Oh, what a there. lovely little now. lad you are, aren't there, you? Now, Who's there. a lovely lad? Now, you keep an eye on your uncle Len. There lad. you are. What should we do with this? Should we go choo 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 all the way down here? Shall we? Well, how are you getting on? It's beginning to look very nice. Ah, oh, it's all right. Are you ready for us? No, not yet, but I will be in half an hour. And I want you both sitting down then, washed and hungry. Yeah, OK. Come on. Where's come Mummy? On. Here's Here Mummy. She is. Come on. Look, did you hear what I said? Mummy washed and hungry. Oh, come we're on. not going to wash on Christmas come Day, on, are we, Come on, come away from these evil smelling men. Hey, right. come on, hey, can I have a train what? back? Can I have a drop of this before oh, he goes? don't you dare. Come oh, on, come on, no, darling. I'll put a dummy on for you, mate. Go daisy whoops a day bye Now, bye. don't forget what I told you. Bye-bye. In half an hour. OK. Bye-bye. Hello. Bye-bye, Christopher. Bye. Come on, mate. It's not half finished yet. You're dead right there, mate. <laughs> Merry Christmas. And to you, love. Can't stop. Got a house full. Merry Christmas, love. Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you. Thank to you. Are you visiting friends? Uh, not exactly. I I'm just on my way to the mission to see how the preparations are progressing. Oh, hey, you. Do you happen to know what the surprises they've got for us? Well, not really. I, I have heard something, but I'd better not say in case it isn't true. Oh, go on. You can tell me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Mr. Fairclough? I didn't know you were here. Yes. Hey, but I, I tell you what, lovers, there's only the two of us here. Let's just have a little tiny drink apiece, shall we? No, thank you. Well, it is Christmas, you know. Oh, I appreciate the, the season. It's just that I don't much like drink. Oh. Oh, I suppose that's a fair enough reason, isn't it? Uh, yes. Um, I was wondering if... Um, it's about tonight. I was wondering if it was true. What? What I'd heard. I, I don't normally listen to gossip, but I was told that at the party tonight, your little secret, it's this is your life. Well, you won't mention it to anybody else now, will you? Oh, I won't. Because it might be your life. If every family in England bought a leg of pork this Christmas and said, blow your turkeys, it'd be three bob a pound next year. Why don't we do it? We did. We had pork. Oh, yes, of course. It needs more than us. Needs them as has money to stop spending it. By gum, you should have seen the pound notes changing hands on market yesterday. Still, you can't blame them, I suppose. If we had money, we wouldn't care a toss for them as hadn't. Right, there we are. That's done. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, it's the least we could do, Ina. That were a very nice dinner. All right, what's that? All right, we'll leave them be. I'll put them away later. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm quite sure. Come on and sit down. And pass them fondants. <coughs> oh, dear. Thank you. Pass one to me. Have a fondant, though. Oh, dear. That one's nice. Hey, I'll bet you were only kidding. Oh, Dennis Tanner. I bet he were up to his old tricks. I don't know about him. You're up to yours. What are you on about? Well, he were talking to me about the party tonight. He said they were going to play a certain game. Oh, I know about that. What did he say? Yes, that's what I heard. No need to whisper. I know and all. Oh. It's right then, is it? No reason why it shouldn't be. Did you happen to hear who it was going to be? I had heard it was you. Oh. 
some hopes of that. How did you hear that, Tina? There you are, you see. She's already up on that stage with all her family round her. Am I echoes like? It might be worth it to hear the true story of Lillian Will. Oh, I've no secrets. My life's an open book. I've only one at few of them. Well, there are things in my life as I wouldn't like to come out, uh, not in front of strangers. Then you'd better not go, then. Oh, it, it won't be me. Hey, suppose it's you, Ina. Well, I'd give them their money's worth, especially if they're sent to Australia for my cousin Letty. I'd tell her what I thought about her, and I wouldn't care who was listening. <laughs> Evening. Uh, good evening. <laughs> it is Christmas, you know. I know it's Christmas. <laughs> Gin and tonic, please. That's all right, love. And seeing as it is, I'll have half a mile. My taste is simple. And half a mile. Mrs. Walker out. Oh, but they're coming back. They're uh, not coming back here, though. They're going on to a party up the street, I believe. There you are. Thank you. Three and something safe. Oh, thanks very much. <clears throat> Oh. I, um, I hear that somebody's going to be rather embarrassed this evening. It could be, and then again it could be a giggle. And I hear that you had something to do with preparing it. Well, I might have. What do you mean, you might have? Well, I saw, saw, you know, how these yes, things are. Yes, I know. Well, Only too well do I know. Who is it? You don't think I'm going to tell you, do you? No, but I'm going to tell you something. If it's me, no Americans. Mm. Have you ever wondered how much darker mild beer is than bitter? Merry Christmas. <laughs> It's like beyond the flaming gold in Everton, this lot. Hey, Len, don't say a word. Why? She's pumping. Oh, well, I won't say a dicky bird, mate. <laughs> Dennis? Oh, sorry, Guess what? I'm wanted on the phone. Right. Right. Have a drink, love. No, I'm still trying to get ready. But if you want to do something for me, tell Dennis that nowadays, when the phone rings, I just pick it up and say, hang on, I'll get him for you. I'll do that. <laughs> well, she's got a sense of humour, anyway. you, Rose? Yes, and there's nothing like having a sense of humour, is there? No, oh, there's yeah. nothing like having a sense of humour, is there? What are you going to have, love? I'm quite all right, thank you. I know you're all right, but what are you... Well, uh, let me press you. Aren't you going to? Well, cheer up, love. It may never happen. What are you doing here, anyway? You're supposed to be around at Hewitt's. I am, but I thought to myself, Len, you never know your luck. If you go down to the Rovers, there might be a nice little bit of crackle in there for you. Anyone particular in mind? Are you kidding? I'll have a gin and tonic. And I'll have a pint of my way. Gin and tonic, pint of my way. And as it's the festive season, darling, I shall escort you from the party tonight. And uh, as you're fair on your mother's side, I'll let you. And look, it's such a long way from our house to the mission. Don't you think we ought to have a taxi? That would be very interesting, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'll be four and two, please. Aye, right, right, <coughs> told uh, Two, four and two, and keep the change. Oh, thank you very much. Yes. Blimey. Save my place and I'll have a rum. What do you mean, save your place and you'll have a rum? Save my place and I'll have a rum. Oh, no, that's not right. Uh, hey, left back up. Where do you think you're going? Well, there's a particular friend of ours out there, and you know how parky it is out there, but there's nothing like a drop of the old Navy rum to keep the old cutlers of the art flying, you know. What you... Oh! Listen, there hasn't been a, 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 a tall, tall fella come in here in a, a, a Navy uniform, a petty officer. No sailors round here tonight, love. Expecting one, are you? No. Not really. Albert! Albert Tatlock! Albert! Come on, you knitted scared freezer. Time and all. I'm, I'm freezing. Hey, I'll get that down you, mate. You're doing a grand job, Albert. Yeah, I reckon I'm a joy egg, if you ask me. You know, you wanted a younger fella on this job. When did they come in? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. But as soon as they all arrive, nip into the vestry there and tip as they went, won't you? Yeah. You've got your list, haven't you? I've got my list. Right, fair enough. You're doing a grand job, Albert. Right, and when are you going to bring us another one of these? Oh, not yet, because I've got a date round here. Well, anyway, are we going to introduce Well, I wish them all Merry Christmas, then. Yeah. What are you doing there? Oh, sorry. I should think so, too. Hey, I don't care what you do say, Merry Tism. Oh, charming. I can't wait to see how he started window cleaning him for Zachary. Yeah. You're only jealous, you are. His most famous one here is Brett. 
Well, I wouldn't exactly say it was famous, <laughs> love, but... <laughs> hey, do you think we'd better get set down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe that'll get us started. Hey, put that down. Hey, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hey, get him all organized, mate, before it gets around the organ. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, would you please take your seats for the main attraction of this evening? Thank you. Right, what about do you want to set, love? Well, it doesn't matter, love, anywhere. Well, uh, you are Mr and Mrs Walker, if you like. Yeah, OK. I'll tell you what, you sit on uh, outside, you'll be able to see better. Hey, I'll tell you what, I bet it's you. Oh, get away, we've not been in street long enough. You know. Hey, Mrs Walker, <laughs> what would you do if it was you? Me, love? I'd die. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I want to welcome all friends here tonight. Thank you. There are a few faces we don't know, but not to worry, because everybody's welcome. Just keep your eye on the door and don't let anybody else in. <laughs> right, now, before the main attraction this evening, just a few words from the man without whose generosity and appreciation of friendship none of us would have been here tonight. Huh. Tomorrow, the world may know him as Brett Falcon. <laughs> you see, they've started already. <laughs> Tomorrow, Brett Falcon, but tonight, Walter Potts. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh no! Well, it's not him. Well, well, well uh, <coughs> thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for coming. And uh, I, I'd just like to thank everyone who's helped me up the ladder of success. Don't forget I helped pass your bucket up. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, just uh, carry on and enjoy yourselves. And, and back to Mr Tanner. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Walter. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment you've been all, all been waiting for. Tonight, we're going to take a stroll down memory lane with someone from this audience. Someone you all know well. Now, I wonder who it could be. Keep walking. <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. Turner. Yeah. Merry Christmas, Mr. and Mrs. Walker. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Ah, Mrs. Lindley, Miss Nugent. <laughs> Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Booth, our latest newlyweds. Uh, round of applause, please. Oh. But now, now the time has come to invite our guest to come up on the stage. So join me in a stroll down memory lane, Mrs. Annie Walker. Oh. Oh. Mr. Tadlock, uh, then I said to tell you when it was ready. Oh, right, oh, 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 you don't know Joan, do you? No. She's Mr. and Mrs. Walker's daughter. Oh. This is Walter Potts. How's she do? How do you do? Walter sings. Oh. Oh, well, uh, I better be getting back, eh? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Well, we'll come in as soon as Billy comes. All oh, right, oh. Oh, well, I promised them, you see, love. I said I'd wait here for Billy to stop him wandering into mission. Trust him to be late. Doesn't change much, does it? No, not so as you know, is it? No. How's Derby? Oh, it's very nice. Busy, of course, yeah. but then we're outside the town. Oh, come on, Billy. It's, uh, it's a good do to get it up for your mother tonight, isn't it? Mm. You didn't pay our Billy's fare, did you? We yeah, just like. Hey, he wouldn't have got ten miles out of London with what we've got. No, when young Denny Stanner rang him up, he said he was thinking about giving his father and mother a surprise anyway. Oh. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Billy, Merry Christmas, lad. And me loving sister and all. Oh, How are you, kid? Cold. <laughs> How are you? Oh, look at you. You're getting as fat as a peg. I am not getting fat. Hey, you're not, uh... No, I'm not. 
Oh, it's about time she is, isn't it? <laughs> Shouldn't we be going in? Ah, yes, I've got started, though. Ah, uh. right, come on. The old girl will be queen in it, isn't it? You haven't changed, have you? Come on. And I can think of no better place to begin with than this message brought to us by our telephonic link and recorded earlier today. Oh. My dear, oh. it gives me the greatest pleasure to record this message on a Christmas day, which may well be a highlight in your life. Mr. Forsyth Jones. I will long remember the smile of friendship you bestowed on a rather lonely man and the welcome you gave me when I visited your city. I can picture you now, gathered around you, your charming husband and the many friends I made during my all too brief stay. I send each one of them my very, very best wishes. But above all, my, my thanks go to you, Anne, for your kindness and understanding, for which, when all is said and done, this is your day. But let us turn back the years to the day when you first entered our lives. There were to be changes at the Rover's return, and the street was agog to see the new mine host and mine hostess. And see them they did on a cold day in January 1939. February, Mr. dear. I beg your February the 4th, to be precise. Oh, <laughs> on a cold day in February 1939, you and your good husband first met the regulars who were to become your friends. Yours was a life of service which can best be summed up by these words. Three milk stouts, please. Oh. <laughs> Something peculiar happened that first night at the Rover's return. Can you tell us what it was? Uh, no, I'm just not. a minute. Uh, it was January, you know. Pardon, Mrs. Sharp. It was January when you moved in. It was February. All right, have it your own, Rob, but I'll still say it was January. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Mrs. Goldwell, something peculiar happened that first night. Something unforgettable. Oh, yes. Oh. I forget what it was. Uh, you uh, went up to the bar, right? Yes. And you ordered some drinks, right? Oh, yes, yes, now I remember. And when I come to pay, I hadn't got enough money with me. And the first thing that Mrs. Walker says to me was, have them on me. Oh, I don't remember that. Have them on me, words from a generous heart. Thank you, ladies. Oh, you take your seat, please, in the body of your heart. But generosity was not enough. Dark days lay ahead, and the life of service to which you had dedicated yourself was to be strained to the utmost. In September of that first year, the black clouds of war rolled across Europe. Your husband was one of the first to be called, and you were left alone to minister to the needs of the people. There are many, you will recall, the helping hand and the cheerful smile which they found in the rover's return during those long nights of war. Yeah. And there are others who will remember you in a different role. Yes, there are others who will remember you in a different role. I'll bring along a smile and a song for anyone <laughs> but of the hours. For you. No, Mr. Nuttall. None other than Mr. Edgar Nuttall, producer and leading light of St. Agnes Amateur Operatic Society. Francois. I'll bring along a smile or a song for anyone. But only a rose. Only a rose for you. <laughs> I well remember our first meeting, long before that famous duet from the Vagabond King, in the autumn of that perennial favourite, The Desert Song. 
I, of course, was playing my usual part of the Red Shadow, and it was the night of our dress rehearsal. Just before we began, my leading lady came to me and confessed tearfully that she had recently volunteered for the Auxiliary Territorial Service, and that her calling up papers received that day had ordered her to report the following Monday, our first night. A silence fell over the whole company as I gave them the news. Then from the chorus stepped a slim figure, uttering these words. Mr. Nuttall, the show must go on. I will take over that part. Oh. It was, of course, Anne. Oh. I auditioned her on the spot, and she was given the part. And need I say it was an unqualified success. Oh. <laughs> and as a further reminder of that first night, we bring you this picture. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Nuttall. Oh, thank you. Service to her customers. The harsh, demanding glare of the spotlight. These were not the only demands made of Mrs. Walker's time during the long years of war. The burden of motherhood had been placed upon her. Could we have the family pictures, please? And now, 200 miles from the Bluebell Garage, Chiswick, London, we bring you this voice. I don't care what they say about your mum, I think you're lovely. <laughs> you properly. Isn't it marvellous? Well, you don't look as though you put an ounce of weight on, love. Well, never mind. You've put on enough for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> but families come and families go, and the first to leave Coronation Street was your daughter, Joan. But now, returning to the scenes of her childhood, is your daughter, Joan, from Derby. <laughs> Oh, he's fine. How are you feeling? Well, all right. <laughs> and now to complete the family, from the body of the all, your strong right arm over the years, Jack Walker. <laughs> I don't give you one. <laughs> As we see you now, surrounded by your family, it is hard to picture the life of romance and glamour you've sacrificed for the cause of service. Let me go back then to the most glamorous day of your life with these words. I know that's not your real air, Lady Godiva, so watch out for this here low bridge coming up. Gee, if it whips your wig off, you won't have look a -ratin. The man who led the horse on which you rode as Lady Godiva during the co-op pageant of the ages, Mr George Stubbins! Oh. And now, what the public saw. <laughs> oh. 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 Now, Mr Stubbins, oh. Mr Stubbins, what do you remember of that day? Oh, well, I remember we lost procession three times. I mean, when you're leading an horse with a naked woman on it, well, you're not going to spend much time looking where you're going. <laughs> you? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Stubbins. Thank you very much. Now, only one surprise remains. We have followed Mrs. Walker's life from the moment she arrived in Coronation Street. Now, let us go back to that day. As Mr. and Mrs. Walker stand outside the public house, which is to become their own for many years, they hear this voice. Excuse me, are you the new beer lady? Hmm? Oh. Esther Hayes. You're I quite right, of course, yeah. Esther Hayes. <laughs> now, can you tell us, Miss Hayes, what Mrs. Walker replied? I can, because I, I remember it very well. She said, not exactly, love. The new landlady. Now, yeah. <laughs> uh, the following day, you went back to the Rovers' return. Could you explain what happened? Yes, well, um, I'd been in the habit of running errands for the previous landlady, so I thought I'd carry on the good work. Well, I walked straight into the Rovers, but before I could get a word out, Mrs Walker took me by the hand, led me into the living room and sat me down. She then gave me such a lecture on young people going into public houses that I've rarely taken a drink since. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say something else? Oh, do love the stage is yours. Well, um, I was the first person to talk to you in Coronation Street, and I think you'd be the last to talk to me. Oh, is it tonight you go to Glasgow, love? Well, no, it's it's next week, but 
I'd just like to say that, well, I'm not a drinking woman, as I said, but I hope I find a pub like the Rover's Return in Glasgow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of our story. Annie Walker, publican, friend, wife and mother. This is your fascinating life. She's a jolly good fellow, but she's a jolly good fellow, but she's a jolly good fellow.